I'm Paul Bennett at Downey Slender Creations here in Millbridge, Maine. We're located along Maine's Bull Coast, not very far from the U.S. Canadian border. And if you watched my video last week, you saw me make a uh, rope splicing fid. And that rope splicing fit is going to be used this week because I'm going to make some boat fenders out of rope, or rope fenders. But before I do, I just wanted to go over a couple of things that I'm going to make first. I'm going to show you how I made this jig. Now this is a very simple jig, and uh, the next uh, couple of film clips I put together is going to show you how I made it. But it's very simple, scrap piece of wood, uh, some dowels, uh, spaced apart about 15-16 inches or so. A few marks where I'm going to use the rope splicing fit and tape some of the rope together to hold it before I start tying knots. This is not absolutely necessary. You don't need one of these jigs to make a rope fender. But if you want to make a number of rope fenders and you want to make them all uniform, exact same size so they all look you know, uniform, uh, it helps to make a jig. The other thing, you'll see that you see this uh, chain here with a shackle, and it's got a, uh, a swivel and a little carabiner hook on the end. I suspended this from one of the rafters in the overhead. There's another swivel further up. Uh, the idea of the swivel is, is when you're tying the knots and you're turning the rope fender around while you're tying the knots, if you don't use a swivel, what's going to happen is this chain would just start binding up and then it would start walking upwards and it would no longer be in a comfortable position. So that's the only reason I did this and that's simple enough. Okay so I'm going to show you next you're going to see how I make a rope fender and it's pretty simple. Uh, please like or dislike if you don't like it and uh, please share the video, please subscribe I appreciate it and helping to build my channel uh, when you keep giving me feedback with your comments and you're subscribing and you're liking, you're, you're interfacing with the videos, um, that really helps build my channel and I really appreciate it. So thank you very much for watching and uh, check out my Patreon page. You'll get a lot of tips and tricks that you won't find here on the YouTube channel. And uh, not just for boat building but for other things as well. And uh, right now the channel is still a bit eclectic. It, it's a lot of different subjects. And uh, I don't know if it's going to change or, you know, go on another, go on another route, I don't know, another direction. But uh, I want to hear some feedback from you, so we'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching. <laughs> right now I'm making a jig uh, that I really don't need a jig for making my uh, rope fenders. But I'm making a jig so that if I make a number of them, they'll all be the same uniform size instead of just, you know, all different sizes and it'll look weird. So I want to make a few all the same size, so I'm just going to make a jig to allow that to happen. So I'm just, I've got a piece of wood here. It's about roughly 20 inches long. And I just want to make a couple of mocks about 16 inches apart. And this is for a small rope fender. And, uh, And I found these measurements I, I got from a guy called uh, The Fender Maker on YouTube. And uh, the guy over in the UK that, that makes rope fenders for all those uh, canal boats that you see over there. So I'm just going to put on one end, I'm going to put a dowel right about in the center, roughly. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but. Sometimes I get a little anal about that stuff, and so I just want to locate it. And I'm using some line that's about three eighths of an inch. So I'm coming back about three eighths from that point, from the line that I drew previously. And I want my center right here, center line. And I'm going to use a three eighths inch dowel. And this, this gap that I just drew, that's going to be the outer edge of the dowel. So the 
radius of the dowel would be 3 16 that's where I'm going to put my awl and drill my hole because I'm going to put little dowel pegs in here the dowel pegs will help me uh, when I put the line on you'll see later uh, it'll help me uh, adjust the line right where I want it to be and then down at this end I want uh, I have to space it apart equally so let me find the center there's going to be two dowels at this end and I'm going to put them oh I'll just put them an inch and a half apart three quarters from center line and that's where I put the other two dowels these my my all I think I'll bring that back a little bit too just eyeball it doesn't matter if I put it in there that's fine okay so now it's just a matter of getting my all drilling some holes uh, I'm gonna cut up uh, three dowels about two inches long three eighths inch diameter dowels that is uh, two inches long each and then I'll just glue them and pop them into the holes that I drill here Just need two more like this, good to go. Okay, I have my three, three dowels. And let me... Just locate where I want those holes. going to start them with an eighth inch bit I'm not going very deep this is a three-quarter inch stock or 18 millimeter and uh, so I'm just going to work my way up to the size of the dowel, which is 3 eighths of an inch. My metric friends might want to use maybe an 8 millimeter dowel, 9 millimeter, I'm not sure how they come, but somewhere in that vicinity, you could use those. You could use a little bit small, a little bit larger, it doesn't matter, it's, you know, it's whatever you have really. So I'm just going to go to... Uh, I'll go up to a quarter of an inch. And now I will step up to three eighths of an inch, the final size. I'm not even going to use any glue. I'll just pop those into place. Is there snug enough? But if you do find that the dowels you use fit a little bit loose, you can always put a little dab of glue in there. It's not going to hurt anything. It doesn't really matter. It's just a very simple jig. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to come back about, oh, about, let's say, three and a quarter, three and a half inches. We'll call it three and a quarter inches from the original line that I drew. And what I'm going to do there, I'll do another one here. I'm going to put, get a little bit of marker or a paint and put that across there and that marks 
when I put the line on here, that marks where I'm going to use my fid. The fid's going to go right there. And you'll see, you'll see what I'm doing. You'll understand that a little bit better later. And then also, right here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll mark a line. I'm going to put a little bit of marker here because when the line comes through, we're going to take some tape and wrap it around down here. Again, you'll, you'll see what I'm doing later, but in, in, it'll make more sense. But all I have to do is just mark these two points and this jig is good to go. And now I can make a whole bunch of rope fenders all uniform, all the exact same size. So they'll almost look store-bought. What I did is I took a piece of, uh, this is actually 3 8 inch uh, pot wop, and, uh, or maybe for my metric friends, it's around nine millimeter, a little over nine millimeter, I think. And uh, this is actually new. Uh, for my larger boat fenders, I'll be using a lot of used stuff, old stuff that's being thrown out. But this is leftover inventory. I used to do some lobster fishing on Cape Cod when I had my wooden boat shop and I had a bunch of this and it can't be used anymore because this is sinking uh, this is a, a floating pot wop and I guess you have to use sinking pot wop now so I can't use this and so I'll just use it for making some small fenders and this will be for the dinghy and so what I did is I took a length about 15 feet long and I just doubled it in half see that's all and I'm putting it in this jig just simply like that Nothing fancy, okay. Now I have another piece, and this is also about 15 feet long. I'm now going to use this rope splicing fit, and where I have a paint mark right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unravel this rope just a little bit, and I want to get this fit started in one strand. This thing's really tight. And once I get this started, just going through, separating it so I get the fit through one strand. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And you don't, if you don't have a fit, you could do this with a screwdriver, you know, something of that nature but the fin will make it just a little bit easier. And I've seen this done using natural rope and it seems to be a little bit easier than this stuff here. This stuff's pretty tough. Doesn't want to unwind very well. But uh, I think I can get it. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna put that back in. So you can see I have the fid lined up with that mark that I made. I'm going to put it through a little bit more. And here's where the fid comes in handy. I'm going to take this line here, the other one, and I'm going to put it through like this. See? Again, find out where the center is. I'm gonna even it up. Still have a little ways to go yet. Let's see where I am. Okay. Right there is the center. And then I'm going to pull the fit out. Like so. And now the two lines 
And now four lines down at the bottom. As you can see here, I'm just laying them in there. I'm going to sort them out, make it a little bit tidier. There we go. That looks a little bit better, I think. As I said, you don't need to make this jig. This is just what, when you're going to make a number of these and you want them all uniform and the same size, that's why you use the jig because uh, they all come out the same, same measurement. And now, we, the mark on the jig down here, this is where I'm going to tape it. And I'm just going to wrap this together. A little bit of tape. And that's all I need to do. Now I no longer need the jig. Okay, this I can set aside. See, so I'll have the eye and I'll have the tape all at the same measurement. And I'm just going to slip it in the carabina. And by the way, if I wanted to make a larger or thicker uh, boat fender using the same line, I can add more strands and just lay the strand, straight strands about seven and a half feet in here and just tape it in there just below the, below the eye here uh, just to hold it in place. And you'll see what I'm doing. Um, I've got four strands. And... What I'm going to do is, I'm making just a little loop here, just for guidance. I've actually switched to a natural fiber, a manila uh, rope, because the pot wop I was using, even though it's old in terms of age, it hasn't been used, and so it's still too slippery. Anything polyester, Dacron, that kind of thing, uh, if it's not used, it's, it's much too slippery. The knots don't hold. and uh, what I really, this, if this were used and it was all roughened up and, and the, uh, the rope was all frayed, it, the, rope, the knots would stick just fine. But, uh, so I switched over to this natural fiber. Same size, it's 3 8 inch or maybe a little over 9 millimeter. Uh, so, I'm going to do this, we're going to try this again and uh, because this will stick. Now, you have four strands, and it doesn't matter which one you start with. I'll take the first one. I'm going to make a little bit of a loop that I'm going to hold, like so. And the first line goes over the second line. Okay? The second line goes over the third line. The third line goes over the fourth line. And tangled up here. The fourth line, okay, the fourth line goes through the loop that you're holding. Put that loop that I was holding up here. The fourth line goes through the loop. In other words, each line just goes over the other. And then, once that is done, then you have to start tightening it up and you have to work them all essentially what I'm doing here is um it's sort of a I guess you call it a crown knot and what I have to do is I have to get them all tightened up evenly and once I have that done um, I can move I'm just going to repeat it Taking the time to work them all together, one by one, getting them all tight. And if you have one that's loose, then that messes everything up. Okay, what's it look like under here? Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to look. Just like that. Okay. Okay. Pull it through and back through and back, through and back, through and back. Okay, I got that fairly well tight. 
So now I'm going to do this again. I'm going to take this one, the first one, and go over the second, the second. It's going to go over the third. And the third is going to go over the fourth. And the fourth is going to go through my loop. And I just have to, again, I just start getting them all even, tightened up, pull through, and tighten them up. And of course, I have not done this a lot, and I'm not very well practiced at it, so it takes me a while. Uh, there are guys that can really blow through this very, very quickly, very fast. And they can do a, a, an entire fender in just a matter of moments. And it takes me some time. Okay, I'm starting to get them all even now. Just pulling through. It's just, I'm repeating, I'm repeating the, the process, the very first process. Uh, a little bit of a loop, one over two, two over three, three over four, four through the loop. And so now I've done that twice, but I just don't think I'm tight enough right now. So you just have to keep working it to get it good and tight. That's part of the key. Okay, so I'm at that point, and now I'll do a third row. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do my little loop. And... I'm going to say, okay, that's, that's one over two, one over two, two over three, three over four, and four through my loop. Okay, and now I can start getting everything worked out, tightened up, each one. Keep working it as I work my way up. And of course this is the uh, third row. And I'm just trying to get it all tight and even. And I need a lot more practice at doing this. But it is working. It just takes me a while. It just takes time. So you can see how that's knotted up and I'm working my way up. You gotta put some effort into it. No free lunch here. Okay, so now I'm ready to do another row. I'm gonna do a few rows, I'm gonna work my way up and then I'll come back a little later so you don't have to sit through the whole thing because it's just a repeat of every step, the same step over and over and over again. Well, as you can see, I'm still at it. And I'm using the same procedure. I'm making my little loop here. And this is the first one. I put it over the second. The second goes over the third. The third goes over the fourth. And the fourth goes back through the loop that I'm holding on to. And then, once again, I have to go around and I have to keep working these lines getting them all cinched up tight and the whole secret to this is making sure that each row is super tight before you start the next one so I'm working at it little by little one by one work your way around and you have to get it as tight as you can that's how it all stays together just four lines and you can do multiple lines not just four the same procedure you just have extra lines and you're looping around and that'll make even a, a, a thicker you know a larger diameter uh, fender as well as using heavier line like this is 3 8 I could use half inch or I could even use 5 8 uh, my metric friends I could use instead of the 9 millimeter I could be using 12 millimeter or larger so I'll do another loop hold on to that little loop so the first one goes over the second, the second goes over the third, the third goes over the fourth, the fourth goes through my loop, 
and once again you go around one by one pull all these tighter start reeling them in so I can snug them up and you just take your time don't try to rush it so you can get them all all good and tight and snug and I'm just holding it on onto it here and keep it from getting away from me. And right now that's it's working out. They're all going together the way they're supposed to. Alright. And ready for another row. So I'm gonna turn off the camera now and I'll come back when I get it pretty up pretty much uh, at the top and then I'll finish it off for you. Okay, I've got the top row about where I want it. I could probably do another row, but I'll tell you, my wrist, my arms, my hands are all worn out. I'm not used to doing this. So I'm just going to take it off the carabiner. So now I just have to finish these ends. I'm going to take the fed for this one here. I'm going to put it down through. Go down through the next layer. I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it through this way, through the top. Try to pull that tight. I'm going to work my way around and I'm going to do it the same thing on all of these. Sometimes it's hard to get it in there because you get everything tight, which it needs to be. Sometimes you can help the fit out a little bit, get a screwdriver or something. Probably should have better, I, I should have put a, uh, a better point on the fit when I made it. Because this is pretty tight. There we go, got it now. Oh, my battery's low. I'm going to have to recharge. I'll finish tucking these through and I'll be back. I've got these all pulled up tight now. And I'm just going to cut off these ends. I'm not going to worry about whippings on the ends because these are in there pretty tight and I don't think they're going to pull out. And I've been assured that they won't or that they don't. So. I'll take the word of the guy who uh, told me about it and I'll try it just like this. Okay, we have a fender and uh, we're good to go.